Hey, what's up everybody? BDL44 coming at you another video. All right, so I'm waiting for food to warm. It's been warming forever. And so it's nowhere near done, unfortunately. Figured I'd turn on the camera and let you guys know about a few opt-in situations that I'm sure you were expecting to come. Uh, first of all, Kendrick Nunn is gonna be opting in with the Lakers, exercising his uh, option on his second year of the mid-level exception for the Lakers. Uh, that was completely to be expected. And of course, even more so expected, John Wall opted into his $47 million uh, option for this particular season with the Houston Rockets. You know, it's one of those situations with the Rockets. They're just being stubborn, to be completely honest with you. That's all it is. They're stubborn. They could have got rid of John Wall's contract a long time ago for Russell Westbrook's contract straight up. They could have did that a long time ago. But they want to ask for more equity, as if John Wall's contract isn't just as bad as Russell Westbrook's on paper now the question is how many more years this wall has that's the question and if it's more than expiring then obviously that's where the lakers have to make up the equity but at the end of the day they should probably be willing to part ways with that thing if it can get them russell westbrook's contract they should be willing to add draft equity themselves to the lakers to acquire Russell Westbrook's expiring $47 million contract if John Wall's contract has more than one year attached to it. That's what I think. They sh we should be telling them they should value the reality of him expiring very soon versus us taking back uh, John Wall's contract if it at least has more years. So that's that's what I'm saying. They, they need to add picks to us, not the other way around. Nobody over here is going to do that so they're stuck on the hook for john wall i'm pretty sure they're gonna sit him again which is just that's what i think is wrong with the entire process of this clearly john wall is working his way back from injury so um he has yet another year to try to work on his conditioning which is not good for a player who's aging uh anymore he needs to get back on the basketball floor but unfortunately he plays for a team that is you know keeping his price at such a place that they can't move it that's the reality of it they just refuse to move him they can move him they just refuse to so that's on them they'll be on the hook for that salary and i guess they're in a situation where it shouldn't be that big of a deal because they're not expected to do anything with those young players next year they don't really necessarily want to bring on salary anyway in the you know since they got rid of christian wood a player who probably more than likely would have been an all-star level player for them this season but in their situation i totally understand why they didn't because they have uh, the third pick in the draft, and they're definitely taking a forward there if they keep the pick. So I expect that they'll do just that and add to that core of young players that they already have in place, as to which John Wall is just going to have to sit another year and not be a part of what it is that they do, which I think is utterly ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. But that's what John Wall signs up for when he takes $47 million of their cap space. They don't want to risk him getting hurt or risk him not being intact uh, for any reason, any reason, even if it means he doesn't play basketball, he, he's become someone too expensive to play, which is a very strange dynamic that I think he needs to get out from under. But, hey, people like money, so they're going to take their money. But this is what comes with it. You will be sitting. So I think it's, it's something that the Players Association and the player side of things need to consider um, when receiving their, with their amount of money, how these contracts are going to be used, what situation John Wall finds himself in, thinking about Blake Griffin's situation in the past, the very situation Russ Brooks obviously comes to mind, Ben Simmons even to a lesser degree. So you just look at all of these different contracts and you just say, is anybody happy with these? I mean, yeah, the player gets the money, but a lot of these guys are already rich. So that money is not changing their lives in such a way that makes the stranglehold of their situation feel like it's worth it, in my mind. Now, I don't know if they agree with that. For all I know, they're like, no, nah, that ain't true, bro. $50 million, I'm cool. But if you're a basketball player, you're an artist on the floor, you don't play basketball just to make money. It's one of the things, and it may be the most important thing, but it ain't the only reason why you play basketball. You actually want to get out there and complete and show people how good you are and leave yourself a legacy in this league. And right now, John Wall's legacy is just a guy who's made a couple all-star teams, played for some bad teams, and then got hurt and stayed hurt for a long time. And he's been healthy and ready to play for over 12 months now. 
that's the reality of it. He could have had God knows what kind of season last year if he would have just had a role on an NBA team. And you think about teams like the Clippers and the Celtics. John Wall might have missed out on an opportunity to play for the Celtics and win a championship this year. He would have been the piece that would have helped them a great deal being that they're defensive and all they needed was somebody who could facilitate. Um, you know, if he was on a, pr uh, on a price that made sense, right, for what it is that he's going to be, that benefits him because he's in a winning situation. Not only that, but it's the way things are going right now. He might have earned himself a contract that would have put him in a position to make the kind of money that he's making anyway, a la Chris Paul, if he found himself in the right fit and did the right thing there. See what I'm saying? Sometimes you just got to be able to see the forest for the trees as a free agent and know, hey, if I sign this, yeah, things can go really, really right. I'm going to be really, really rich, but there's also a path. In fact, the probability of this path is pretty high that I'm not going to enjoy my years getting paid all that money. <laughs> I'm not going to be even able to play basketball in John Wall's case, though I'm fully healthy. So it's like, nah, I don't know, man. If, if you want to pay me for $50 million to sit down, I'm going to take it. But here's the thing. I, I pride myself on being an artist, right? So if you're telling me that you're going to give me $50 million to stop doing all of the things that I feel I love to do, I'm going to reconsider how much that money means to me, especially if I'm already up $150 million. You see what I'm saying? Now you're telling me just to let go of my, my passion just to stack on a little more money. I don't know how many people love that. I don't think the ratio of people that love that is as high as we think. I don't think so. Now, if you, again, bring it to the level I'm on, and yeah, everybody here is going to stop doing everything and we're going to start doing whatever you tell us, $50 million, but it's about where they're at when this happens. John Wall already has his money. He took care of everything that needs to take care of in his life. His family's straight money has been in his life for a while now now it's about whatever matters to him and in my mind as a expert basketball player who's in his 30s now i want to get back on the court and salvage whatever time i have left on the basketball floor and at time he cannot get back no kind of way there's a million ways to make a million dollars you show me a way to replenish time and i'll show you somebody who can make a lot more than a million dollars off of that that skill right there so that's what it is, man. We understand that time equity is more important than anything else when, in the grand scheme of things as it pertains to your life, especially if you're already up $100 million. So that's what I think. I think that needs to be worked into the equation when we start talking about mental health. Where does that play a part in it? When you talk about the pressures these players take on with the responsibility that they agree to, where does that play a part and how does that go wrong for all parties involved? And these are things that we need to start thinking about. Because we have evidence now that shows us, hey, yo, that contract is not good for anybody. Not the owner, not the player. Not, and it's not the fact that they shouldn't get their money. Of course they should get it. It should just be structured a different way for them to receive it with the absence of that pressure and with the absence of the need to remove certain players in order for your team to actually be able to win. Just because of the, the nature of those contracts. There has to be another way to get them that money. That's all I'm saying. So that's what I want to see the NBA try to figure out over the next, it's going to take some time. 10, 12 years, whatever, and uh, try to get these guys their money without having it affect the basketball clubs themselves. And there are ways to do that. I just don't know what the hell they are, but I'm pretty sure if I sat down with people smarter than me, there would be some pointers from which to work with. I think there's something to do there. So that's what I want to see happen, man. Teams shouldn't suck. The, the fans suffer in the end, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because when these players are not engaged and they're not happy and they're not getting the money and they don't have the teammates and all that stuff, then it tra translates to the product we see and it does not translate to the type of product that we hope to see. So that's what I got to say about that, man. I want to see everybody get rich in the NBA, whether they're at the top of the bench or the bottom of the bench, get what you're supposed to get. Um, yeah, that's what I got to say. So. That's what it is. A couple of guys opting in. I think they made the right decision for their lives. Um, maybe not the greatest thing for the teams that they're a part of, but uh, again, that's the nature of the business. It's the nature of the environment they're in. We, we fix the environment. We can fix these problems. Don't blame the players and don't blame the owners. So that's what I got, man. That is my position on things. My name is BDF44. Thank you all for watching. I'm out.